All right, all you codgers. Today, we're going to do something fun. We're going to go absolutely crazy with animating a logo in Fusion. Here's what we're making today. We have this logo coming in. We have the two axes flying in. We have the tree growing out of nothing here, splitting that 2014. We have a little bit of parallax between the back of the logo and the text here. There's a lot of cool stuff going on here, really easy techniques, and we'll show you exactly how to do it. My name's Casey. I teach content creators how to make amazing things in Fusion. If you want to learn how to use Fusion, well, why don't you check out the Fusion Survival Guide? It's a free video course available right now in the description below. Let's animate. Here we are in Fusion, we just have a blank composition. And I released a video a little while back animating this logo, which is just a PNG. And we could certainly do a lot of the stuff that we're doing in this video just by putting this PNG there and kind of breaking it up with masks and everything. But man, is it a whole lot easier if you have this split up into layers first. So if you have Photoshop or Illustrator or one of the layer-based design programs, Affinity, that kind of thing, you should be able to split this out into layers somehow. From there, if you can make this into a Photoshop file, well then you can do some fancy stuff in Fusion. So I'm gonna go up to the Fusion menu and go down to Import PSD. Bet you didn't know you could do that. And I'll find our logo layers 1a.psd and hit Open. What this will do is it will bring in all of the layers of your Photoshop file with their layer names and put them into merges. If we grab this second merge and hit one on the keyboard, look, there's our logo. It's the same as just as he said. And I'm gonna change this layout to make any sense at all because I have a little bit of decency in the world. I like to have my layers go from left to right and my foregrounds come in from the top on all of my merges. and Get these all aligned just like that. So now we have our logo. And let's go ahead and merge this over our background, just like we would with our PNG logo. Boop, like this, and we can get rid of our PNG. And now, if we go through each of these, we can see all the layers as they kind of build up. I'm just hitting one on the keyboard to bring this up here. And now, it's super convenient because we can grab each of these things, like just this axe, or just the other axe, or just the little tree and we can animate these all separately. So let's have some fun and do some playing around. One thing we talked about in the previous video is having these axes kind of fly in. So let's go ahead and start with something like that. I'm gonna grab one of our axes and let's just make a transform node in between the axe and the merge like this. And one thing we can do with the transform node is we can adjust this pivot right here. So if I grab Y and kind of push that up, that'll move our little green pivot point around here. And I can put this right where I want it to be. So maybe I'll put this kind of right in the middle of the axe. And now as I rotate, it will move this axe around that pivot point. Very cool. So if I want everything to kind of wind up here, let's maybe do this in like 16 frames or so. I'll keyframe the angle and the center. And here at zero, let's take this off screen. There we go. And we'll rotate this backwards a little bit. Maybe something like that. Now let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. Look at that awesomeness. Look at it go. So, I mean, that's mostly what there is, is grabbing each of these layers and making a transform node, moving to the place you want it to end. So let's say 16 frames for this one too. And I'll adjust this pivot again, put that right in the middle, keyframe our angle and our center. Then we'll move to our first frame, move this off screen and rotate it a bunch. So now we have our axis flying in. Oh, and it just looks sick. Whoopsh, whoopsh. Yes. Let's do something else fun. I like this little tree down here. Let's have him grow out of nothing. So we have our tree right here. Let's make a transform node and let's combine this with a mask. We'll just mask this merge node right here. And we'll just put a rectangle mask into that merge node. And so now this is only going to show up inside of the mask. And I'll make this small just so it's just around our tree like that. And now we can take this transform node and pull that tree down. And it's like it grows out of nothing, right? Cool. So again, maybe let's do, let's have this grow and be done at 24 frames or so. So we'll just keyframe the center of our transform and we'll have it start at like 10 frames or so. Then we'll just push it down like that so it's off screen. So it brings it up like that. Cool. Now I like this 2014, which is actually called Media In because it was called 2014 in Photoshop and you can't name a node starting with a number. So I could say underscore, 2014, that would be totally fine. And let's make a little bit of room, kind of push this to the side, because what I wanna do is split this up a little bit. And I think I'll do that just with another rectangle node. Just put that into our merge. And let's just grab the left side of our 2014 here. Again, we'll size this appropriately. And we'll take our 2014 and we'll merge it over the end of that merge. 
So it's just being merged twice, but we're gonna take this same rectangle mask and plug that into this other merge, but we'll select this second merge and go over to settings and select apply mask inverted. And so it's going to use the inside of this mask for the left side and the outside of it for the right side. So what we get is we get this split in two. We have the 20 on the left and the 14 on the right, which means since this is split out again, we could do another transform node like this. We can move this kind of towards the middle on both sides. Maybe you hide my tree for a minute. We can have that 2014 looking normal like how you would expect a 2014 if you're just going to type it out. We'll have that kind of working just like that. And then as the tree grows in, we can have these split apart. So it should be totally apart by this point, by 24 frames. And it can be together until right about here, in about 18 frames. So we'll keyframe the center of this transform and the other transform. And then by frame 24, we're going to have these both at 0.5 to split that apart. So now as the tree grows up, it splits that apart. Isn't that cool? Shunk. So that's kind of the basic movement. Looks good. That works pretty well. Let's do one more fancy thing. Maybe we'll take this woodsman and we'll kind of fade this in somehow. Why don't we grab some fast noise and I'll punch that fast noise into the mask input of our woodsman here. I'll push up the detail a little bit, push it up the scale a little bit, push up the contrast a little bit. And now we kind of get this eaten away look. And now as everything is animating in, let's just do like um, from frame like six, I can go to the color tab of our inspector and I'll just take this alpha tab for this black and I'm going to fade this in over time until like 24 frames. We'll just have this fading up like that. And so now this kind of fades in in a splotchy way. And as we do that, let's go ahead, go to the seethe rate and push the seethe rate up a little bit. So it kind of morphs as it fades in. Very cool. And this whole thing, we can take this merge right here for Woodsman and we can animate the blend so that it kind of fades in. So I'll just set it zero at zero frames and then it kind of fades in. And then we turn that alpha up so that it doesn't mask it. And we get that really cool little effect. So that's some cool stuff. The other thing I want to do is take this background and let's go ahead and add a transform to the background. And maybe as everything's kind of coming in at 24 frames, we'll end up here and I'll keyframe the size this time. And we'll kind of push the size back a little bit, kind of push it back just a touch. So now it kind of zooms in as things animate and it gives a little bit of parallax. That looks cool. Yes. Sweet. So we have a lot of stuff going on here. These are just kind of some of the many little examples that you could do to animate a logo like this. You can grab all the different elements and move them around and mask them and make individual things. Really the sky's the limit here. But now let's go to the spline panel in the upper right, click on the spline. And this is gonna show us a graph of all the keyframes in our comp. You can make sure to click on this button, this zoom to fit button so that we see everything. And I can click anywhere here and hit control A and that will select all of my keyframes. And I can hit F on the keyboard to flatten out all of the tangents. That's just a quick way to make all of our animation really smooth and nice. So now, oh man, it looks so good. Chunk looks super pro. All right, here we go. Nice. So now we have this nice little motion graphics, this animation coming in. That looks awesome. So you can really do this kind of thing with any logo. You could certainly animate the timber goods. You could animate the background some more, but that's pretty much how it's done is you bring this in in layers by either importing a PSD or you could export all the layers as separate PNGs and kind of bring those in. But either way, you kind of build your logo here in Fusion and then you add a transform to animate any of these elements. You can mask them by masking the merges. And yeah, pretty simple way to get some really cool results here in Fusion. I love animating stuff like this. If you want an even more in-depth video, let me know and we'll get totally crazy. Till then, if you're just getting into Fusion, make sure to check out the Fusion Survival Guide. And for more videos on Fusion for content creators, make sure to check out all the other videos that I have, including this one. <laughs> hey, thanks for being here. I think you're great. I think you smell great. I actually don't know that. But you might, maybe you smell great.